everyone. It is me, Aquastar. I'm back with an update. It's been a long time, I know. Um, long story short, okay, I don't even know where to start, but long story short, uh, I think it was in January I did order two Ryukin babies from this seller on eBay called Lou News. I had actually got my white Aranda from them, and she's very healthy. Everything was fine with her. But when I got these two... Um, baby Ryukins. They both were absolutely ate up with ick. I did make another video on that. I want to try to upload that um, when they were still sick and I was like really bummed out. I was scared. Um, I had transferred it to this tank w along with this tank too. Um, I used to have the two baby Ryukins over here. Anyway, okay, so now it's it's been like about a month and I beat it. Like I kicked that ick right in the ass. It scared me. I hadn't had ick since years ago. Years ago when I had my other 50 or 55 gallon. It was so long ago, like 10 years ago. Um, so I was kind of like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? So um, I was really freaked out. Well, I'm going to tell you how I beat it this time. Um, there was There's so many options out there. There's people saying to use garlic. There's people that say use the heat and the salt or just salt or just heat. And then people do, some people use medication. Well, I kind of did a little bit of everything. Um, and I'll let you know what worked best for me. In both tanks, I did put in heaters. Um, and I still have them. They're not up to 86 anymore. I had both of them up to 86 now that I'm keeping it steady at about 80 degrees. I'm thinking this this kind of keeps ick at bay if it ever tries to come up again. But anyway, I did leave the heaters in here. I put heaters in both. You might be able to see it in that one. Pardon my walls. My friends went nuts on them years ago. About to paint it this year. Anyway, okay, so I did use the heat method. Over the course of two or three days, I slowly got it up to 86. I didn't go above that, though this Marine Land heater is really powerful, and it was like pushing it up to 90 sometimes, and I'd have to turn it down. Um, and I did the salt, aquarium salt. Um, I did uh, one tablespoon per five gallons of water. Um, I think in this 55 gallon I did like 11 tablespoons and I would put them in this little container right there or that little jug that's what I do some water changes with the small water changes there's mouse traps back there we have mice real bad right now anyway so I did that and I would dissolve the salt in that little container for about a half hour let it really or like 20 minutes let it really dissolve and then I would pour it in there um, if you want to know more about adding aquarium salt or any kind of salt to your goldfish tank, like you need to Google. Um, this is one advice, like one thing that I say to a lot of people is like Google it. If you have any questions, you can so ask me and I'll answer you as soon as I can, the best I can. But me, where I learn all of my stuff is Google. Like I literally go to Google and ask questions and read what other people have said and their experiences. And that's where I learn most of what I'm, you know, what I use now. Anyway, so I did the heat and the salt, but I also was kind of like freaking out and I just wanted to hurry up and kill the, the insect that was like invading my little sweeties' homes. They're up there. They think I'm going to feed them. Here in a minute, honeys. So anyway, I did use a little bit of medication in each tank. I used uh, API Super It Cure in this tank, in the 55-gallon tank. It worked, but I'll say this, uh, it did kill the bacteria in my tank, which right now I'm still building up the bacteria in my tank. I'm using, um, what's it called, Te Tetra Safe Start. I'm using that, doing a lot of water changes. It seems like it's evening out again. It's testing good, but it did, this did kill the bacteria in my tank, the beneficial bacteria. In the 29-gallon that I had the baby Ryukins in when they were still infected with ick, I used the heat, the salt, and Paragard. Paragard, I'm not kidding you, the next day, half of all the white spots, all the ick on the fish were off, and then within a few days of that, they were like completely gone, though I still kept treating for a week straight, just to be sure. The Paragard from my experience, just my experience, acted more quickly and it did not kill the beneficial 
bacteria in this tank. This tank is still fully cycled. This one's just now getting back up to par. Um, so yes, the API Super It Cure worked, but it killed my beneficial bacteria. This worked and did not kill the benef beneficial bacteria. So I'm going to be buying another bottle of this soon just to have handy, just in case I ever got another outbreak of ick. Um, I read this online somewhere. I've seen a couple people talking about it, that if you do choose to add medicine in addition to heat and, uh, and some salt, if you do choose to go the medication route, it's best to dose your tank at night right before you go to bed as you're turning out the lights. And that's what I did. Um, I'm thinking because, okay, I think I dosed like one day just during the middle of the day with Paragard. And I didn't like really see no difference the next day. And then that night came, that next night, and I dosed right as I was going to bed after I read what other people were saying. And, and that's when they were over here in this tank, the little baby Ryukins. And the next day I woke up and they only had, they went from like having 50 spots on them to like three or four. So I don't know if that played into it. I don't know if it was just the heat and the salt starting to do its magic or it was the Paragard. But either way, to be on the safe side, why not just dose at night? You know, because they were saying that it's at nighttime that the ick parasite falls off and goes down into the bottom and hatches out. So that's when it's susceptible to medication and the salt and heat. So dose at night. Like I would say dose at night. If you go to bed at 10 o'clock every night, dose at 10 p.m. And turn out your lights in the fish tank in your room. You know, let the fish sleep. Let the medicine do its, its magic when the ick drops off and hatches its little eggs or whatever it does. Um... And so, yeah, everybody's fine now. Everybody's been okay for like a month now. Um, I do have seven fish in here, and I have two over here. Um, I have these two over here by themselves for two reasons, so that my 55-gallon ain't overwhelmed. I, you know, don't believe in understocking, but I don't want to over, over, overstock, obviously. Um, so I do have these two over here, and also because these two can't eat as much as the other ones do, <clears throat> These guys have a um, little bit of swim bladder issues. If they eat a, a small amount, like three times a day, they do great. If they eat like one or two large meals, they're, they are swimming all funky. So it is best to keep these two by themselves, and they have a different, a slightly different feeding schedule than my Aranda's and the baby Ryukins. These guys seem to be doing really well. Um, they don't have floaty issues, though, you know, still don't want to overfeed them. But, yeah, everybody's doing good. The only other little... Ugh, that's my annoying pug. They bark so much. Anyway, the only other little issue I have right now is I do have brown algae. Um, I don't know where it came from. I'm suspecting that it came from some plants I ordered. I did have some Amazon swords. Um, the goldfish ripped those apart, so I had to throw them away. I had some java ferns. Those... those it kind of started just going downhill, so I tossed them out. They ended up not looking good. The best plants that I've had success with so far, I've been in this hobby again, like renewed into it, like for like seven months, I think now, like something like six months. And it's Anubius, definitely. This is an Anubius Nana. That's an Anubius Broadleaf. That's an Anubius as well. And I'm thinking it's a, it's a Broadleaf too. It just ain't as mature as this, maybe. Anyway, these, that, I love this. This is so, like, it's beautiful. Anyway, I do have some brown algae right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to look up how to eradicate that without harming the beneficial bacteria in my tank. You can kind of see it up there. That's not normal discoloration, that, those dark brown patches. It's brown algae. You can actually see it um, attaching. See those brown spots on that big leaf? That's, yep, there it is. That's that's brown algae. Um, it gets around the corners of the aquarium too. You can see it. It rubs off really easily. Like even with your finger, um, it's been getting on my light back there, my Airstone LED light. Um, you can see it on the filter right there. See a little spot. Just nasty, nasty looking stuff. I don't think it's harmful. I'm going to read up more on it, make sure it isn't harmful, but it is unsightly. It isn't pretty. 
So I want to get rid of that. I'm going to read up tonight how to like eradicate that out of my tank without like harming my beneficial bacteria. So the fish don't seem to mind, but I do. So we're going to be getting rid of that real quick. Loki's gotten very large. I think he's, uh, from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail, I think he's about five inches. He's um, great. He's They're all so healthy. Um, seven goldfish in here with water changes once to twice a week, 50% or more. Sometimes I do up to 80. They do fine. I use Prime to help ba balance everything out. Prime water conditioner. I cannot stress enough how important that stuff is. Um, yeah. So here, I'll show you real quick. <laughs> Prime water conditioner. I have upgraded, though, and went on and got Safe. Safe is just the powdered form of Prime. It's the same thing as Prime, but it's in powder form. It's more concentrated. This will last you longer. You just have to mix the... you you got to mix the solution for yourself. Um, like for this bottle... This 16.9 uh, fluid ounce bottle, I add um, four to five teaspoons. I go on and usually put five, five teaspoons in here. Shake it up real good. Let it sit overnight. It's ready to use. It's just a better buy. But um, yes, I for ick, I recommend. I, I honestly try to go the most natural way possible. I did use. Um, I used the heaters and I used salt. Uh, one tablespoon for five gallons and uh, a little bit of medication may not hurt if you if your fish are really bad these little guys right here this one's so cute she's so pretty she's black and blue she was absolutely ate up with eggs she looked horrible if I can upload that other video I think it's still on this phone um, I'll do that you can see like how bad she was the Paragard did good but I also think the heat and the salt obviously did and um what else did I? I did feed them some garlic. I went and got some garlic bulbs. I crushed it up really nicely for them, really soft, like not big slivers. Like I crushed that stuff, fed it to them like once every couple days. And I did throw a couple cloves in the tank too. My room smelled awful, but I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it helped. I do know it helps boost their immune system. So, yeah. Um, the heat. You know, um, and then maybe maintaining your tank, your goldfish tank, at about 80 degrees might kind of keep it from trying to come back or trying to come into your tank. Uh, and when you're treating ick, you want to get up to 86. You want to do one tablespoon of salt, aquarium salt, per five gallons of your tank. Um, remember not to keep adding salt. Salt does not evaporate. It does not, like, go away. It's stays in your tank so if you do a water change of 50% you only want to replace 50% of the salt that you should add you know so like what I said Google research read that's your best friend um, if you have any questions or comments I will so try to answer you guys and thank you for following me and yes my fish are doing good and they survived the ick outbreak thank the Lord and they're happy for it too um, I'm gonna feed them and make sure they're all full and happy so, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye.